We're the Indie Project, B and Theo. In 2017, we bought an abandoned property in central Portugal and spent the last few years turning it into a fully fledged homestead, converting an old stone barn into a cozy tiny home. Working non-stop and overcoming many obstacles, it turned out better than we ever could have imagined. As one chapter closes, another one begins. Our dreams of living even more remotely in a fairy tale forest with space for animals to roam and our passions to grow became a reality. Before we have even moved there, it was devastated by a huge wildfire, drastically altering the landscape. Immense flash floods followed as the land couldn't hold onto the water. Follow us as we carve out our new life on Miracle Mountain. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I am smiling pretty hard right now because today the sun is shining, it's a beautiful spring day and I get to spend the day in the forest which is my favourite place on Miracle Mountain, I absolutely love it up here and we're doing some exciting things to do with the pond build. A couple of days ago, we had a guy come here to assess the area. He's got a big JCB and he's gonna come and dig out the pond that got filled in with silt a good few months ago now. So we've got some things we need to prepare before he can actually get to work. So we're gonna be doing those today. And he also gave us some really good information because he actually worked on the property a couple of years ago now and told us something that we knew nothing about. If there's one thing I've learned on Miracle Mountain, it's to pack the UTV bed up full of the stuff that you may or may not need for the day because it's a long way back to the workshop. All I need for now is the angle grinder. We're gonna head further up the mountain and show you something that could be a real cool possibility in the future. You can probably hear me heavy breathing because after a very steep walk, we've arrived at some gates which take us into this lovely green like wild flower meadow area that's right next to the spring and there's a big water tank <laughs> falling all over the place. There's a big water tank here and this water tank is locked and we never received the key for it which was a bit frustrating because we'd never been able to look inside and I know the pipes actually damaged into this water tank. So that is what we need to do now with the angle grinder is cut these locks off, see how much water it's full with, and then we need to figure out how we can fix this system in the future before the next heavy rains. So just to give you a little bit of scale, I'm standing on top of these metal covers. Hopefully it doesn't fail, because if it does, I might turn into Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and end up in a different part of the property. <laughs> These haven't been opened in a very long time. You can tell that. Oh, oh. one of them's already been cut open. <laughs> so clearly the previous owner forgot the key as well. So you can open that one side or Yeah, and I'm, I might as well chop this one as well. So what we're gonna do is just clean all of this rubbish out from the crack. You can tell this oh, hasn't man, been open. I'm such a pleb, I just burnt my hand <laughs> on that metal. Don't touch the metal. But yeah, <laughs> remove all of this sod <laughs> beneath the crack because- The thing is, it's all rooted, look. Yeah. It's like big clumps. But all Ooh, of- And there's millions of ants. All of this will fall into the uh, into the tank which we don't want because the reason it had lids on is because this is really clean fresh spring water the moment of truth oh it's a heavy draw yeah so it's about a quarter full yeah because it's got no water coming into it anymore has it there's no water coming through because 
what the guy told us is he believes that this tank is filled by a second spring on our property that we didn't know about. So let's go up there and try and work out where it could come from. But that's lovely and clean water in there. The curiosity got the best of me, so I'm gonna open the second lid. Okay, not what I was expecting. This is why the water's so clean, because this is some sort of cleaning system. So you can see that there's two separate chambers in here. And in the third chamber where the nice clean water is, basically what happens as I can see, it comes through this pipe it goes into this chamber and you can see all the mud and silt that's fallen to the bottom. And then once it rises enough, it goes over this basically concrete partition. All of the fresh water goes over and then goes into the second tank, which is where you get your lovely fresh spring water can that though, I believe that you can drink it as well. How does that get in there? Oh, is that a there's a pipe, pipe. yeah, right, there's a pipe. And this is lower. This tank's higher than that one, so it's okay. all gravity fed. That is a really cool system. Do you think this is where our drinking water was meant to come from? No. That one there? This, is not, this is not for us. Okay. This is for further down the land. I believe that this connects possibly to the pump house. Yes. But let's head further up to the spring. So I've just noticed that the pipe running into this tank is completely melted and has split in half. The other side of the pipe is here that runs underground. So we're gonna follow it up to where basically the guy told us he believes there was a spring three years ago. So we, knew nothing about we this. didn't know about this spring. So another spring, more water on the property. It's always helpful to have as much water as possible. It's kind of crazy how deep on the mountainside we are now. And there's still all this infrastructure because clearly you're getting this freshest water from up here. So there's another concrete tank with a big lid that I can't move. You need a digger to lift this up and move it. But down here, I noticed that it looks like there's an overflow pipe just here that comes out the ground and clearly when that's full up, so I imagine it goes possibly from the spring or an overflow goes into this concrete tank and then shoots the water back into this valley and down the mountain. And it makes sense as a spring because where you're standing right now is a natural waterway, it's dry right now. Exactly. The spring is full, but we did see a small amount of water, didn't we, coming out of the stone up there? It makes sense because I remember seeing this running before. Yeah. So the spring further up, the spring lower down where we take our water for our house is completely fine. And that's running obviously, cause we've got nice fresh spring water. But the other one, it's clearly just been completely full up, which means this is now dry. Let's keep going. Yeah, so there's a, this is almost like what you'd call a water mine, but this has been dug away, I believe. So the spring water can come under this big terrace. So you've got this big stone wall. And if the water was to come over it, over time, it would degrade, it would wash away and you wouldn't have a wall anymore. So what they do is they drop the water underneath and then it comes out the bottom and runs down this valley. So further up here is where he was saying the spring should be. That's so clever. How have I never seen this little place before? How nice are the birds? Yeah, I love it. The birds are going wild.
As you can see, there's a gate over there. So we think that they definitely needed access to this plateau for a reason. And it's really big and flat. At the moment, it's covered in silt and stone, which we think filled in the pond. And it's a big area, but you can see that there's clearly been trees planted around the outside. We know that trees don't grow in the middle of a pond because they'd die if they're completely submerged in water all the time. So I imagine just here was some sort of small holding pond, probably about a quarter of the size of the one we're gonna dig out down there. And what it does is it just slows the water down the mountain. So the water would run down here, it would fill to a point and then it would overflow and go under this terrace and then down into that tank. The tank would also slow the water down and then it would shoot back into the valley. And you've just got this process of probably, I would say six or seven times, we've got different things and different infrastructure to slow the water down because as we've seen the destruction that it can do when the infrastructure is damaged is absolutely brutal. But it is shocking. The guy was pointing over here at this wall and he was saying... Hang on, wait. That is a stunning stone, firstly. It is. <laughs> it's a Let's massive go and have a look. boulder. And Let's that wall and... has been purposefully built as well, you can see. It's really... And definitely know there's water here because look at all of the plants that are growing up. So somewhere around here, he believed that there was another spring. So there's definitely some investigation to do. It's so pretty. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's like a fairy, fairy world. But that's for another day. <laughs> we need to make the area on the main pond further down the mountain clear so the the guy i was going to say the big guy he's not a big guy the guy with the big jcb can get in because it's super high it is right now we've got to trek all the way back through our forest which is always fun and i don't know if you can tell but the fruit trees that we think were planted here because there was the natural spring they're all flowering and i think that's a cherry tree really beautiful as the sound of I was of just going to say let's go a different way because we've got some beautiful terraces down here. All of these stones it's kind of hard to believe were washed down by the force of the water it rained that hard it completely transformed the landscape. We have so much river stone on this property that I could probably build a cabin up here out of stone actually <laughs> like really easily. <laughs> but I just love this area. So beautiful, all of these massive boulders. Feels like I'm in a movie. This is actually my favorite part of the forest. I remember coming up here before the fire and there was this beautiful old tree. It just looked like something that you'd see in Fern Gully, the film. <laughs> And unfortunately that did go completely in the fire, but this whole area here behind me with the walls, it's still standing. And I love it because you get all butterflies living inside there. How far do you want to go, mate? Remember my knee's still healing. <laughs> we're, we're going, I just want to... <laughs> uh... I'm just casually holding this stone back. It's a beast, absolute monster. Carve a little hole in there for Fernando to live in. <laughs> he loves it up here. Should we go down through here? Yeah. Pretty steep, just be careful on your knee. I know, I'm a bit scared actually. Casually look like you're in Lord of the Rings. Where's Frodo, have you seen him? <laughs> Frodo, AKA Fernando. <laughs> Fernando. <laughs> this is so sketchy on my knee. At least you got leaves to fall onto. The silt that's going to be removed from the pond is going to be put into all of these crevices that you can see. It's kind of hard to show up on camera, but some of them are about four to five feet deep. And it'll be really good to put the silt in these cracks and fill it in so this road can be usable again, because right now it is completely unusable for vehicles. Obviously we can walk up it, but it's 
not ideal. Just spotted a really tiny little frog. It's actually covered in pollen, which is adorable, but it is miniature. You can see the size of the GoPro next to it. So I'm just filling up the pole saw with some oil and also some fuel, and then I'm gonna to get to it. Got a fair few branches to cut. And the reason I'm cutting the branches is so that the massive machine doesn't keep bashing off the branches. He, he basically asked for the branches, the low branches to be removed. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. When I brought this pole saw, I wasn't sure how much use it would actually get after the initial clearing of the property, but it's coming really handy. It's just great to have around. <laughs> Extreme chain store jousting would be unbelievably terrifying. to believe that where Theo is standing is where the pond is meant to be but all of these branches here they're quite high up but he is using a big machine they need to come down so he's literally just trimming them shouldn't take that long and I'm going to move all of the branches that he trims into the back of the UTV and then there's other trees like this one here not coming down just the branches are coming off they're overhanging and then these big ones here, some of their branches are overhanging, they need trimming as well. So hopefully it won't take too long. And then we also need to move this pile of wood, this pipe, so he can access, because he'll be driving up from that way with his big JCB. Light up the house and lock the door. Come out and meet me on the porch, because I'm coming home. Train your eye on the setting sun. I've just finished on the pole saw and luckily we're able to keep this tree because there's enough width to get his vehicle through here which is nice because it's a beautiful tree and basically he's going to be using this route so much because all of the silt and stone that he digs out of the pond is going to be filling in the holes and the crevices in the road that eroded in the flooding so a waste material that we don't want in the pond can be reused for something else it's really nice. And next we need to move all of the cuttings out of the way so that he can actually access it. It really, the GoPro really minimizes the amount of stuff that's here, but there is a lot of stuff that we need to move now. So Theo has gone to get the UTV, back it up so we can lob the stuff in there. But this stuff, it's actually quite surprising how big some of these branches are, but this I think was also a pine nut tree and I'm excited to have some pine nuts, so please produce some pine nuts, friend. We're driving down to where we're eventually gonna have our woodshed and put all of this there because that's the best place for it to go.
So we've just dropped off the first batch. Now we need to actually move all of the cuttings. So Theo is reversing as close as he can, so we haven't got to drag him too far. I see gold in the air, in promise in the streams. I see love in our hearts, futures in our dreams. It's a tunnel kind of vision, like alcohol's involved And I'll stray like a hound dog But I'ma come back when she calls, when she calls I'll come to her I just uh, put a plant in the back, a tree branch And it was a Jumanji tree branch <laughs> It flicked back and I have to try and find some, but it was covered in these like little cactusy kind of thorns and smacked me in the face. And Theo had to pull all of the thorns out of my face, and now it's super itchy. <laughs> I'll throw them over the river. Are you throw them over the river and I lob them in? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I reckon people, oh no. Where did that come from? Splash. It went in my mouth. <laughs> Today is not my day. I'm getting stagnant muddy water in my mouth and tree cactus spines in my face. What's next? Probably get pooed on by a bird. They come off its hinges? Yeah. So what you reckon take them off and you then... Need to dig them out <laughs> Oh yeah, we just saved ourselves a job. Theo, you're a genius. Hopefully this one doesn't say. Yeah, it does. Yeah! Well, that's good. Theo's just dragging the last bits over that we need to move after we've dumped that last one. There's quite a few big branches, but he's making light work of it because one of us has to film, and that's me. <laughs> but these branches, they're dead anyway. You can see all of the actual pine needles were dead. And if I come over here, you can see these branches that we need to move, but the UTV is full, so we'll go and dump them first and then load it back up. And then I think we're done and we can go and have some lunch. Oh, I'm hungry. What are you making for lunch? Pine needle soup. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we weren't messing about with getting the rest of the twigs on and branches for this last one. Look at this. Definitely full to capacity, but we're all done after this last one, which is great. We made sure to fill this last one to capacity. <laughs> the UTV's got a literal fringe, or bangs as you'd say in America. Looks really good. I actually quite like this look. <laughs> and we're done. Oh, that one kind of went everywhere, but it doesn't matter. It's done.
it's a new day and you can probably see and hear the massive digger behind me. He turned up early this morning and we've really cracked on. Things are really moving fast. Let me show you what's going on, but soon we are gonna have a pond and I couldn't be more excited. So the first thing we had to do this morning was lay this piping out. It goes all the way to where he's dammed off the water. So we basically dammed it all off. We put the pipe in and then compacted it all around. It was really interesting. Feels like I'm doing a little bit of an apprenticeship with a pro digger driver. I'm learning a lot already, which is really cool. But this pipeline basically carries all of the water around and over the top of the pond so the pond's not constantly filling up with water but what's amazing about this machine is there can be four foot of water and his tires are so massive he's just sitting in it no problem where i would be fully submerged and drowning at that point <laughs> so this is a spring fed dam and if i follow the pipe you'll be able to see where he's actually dammed it up so what i did is i put this pipe through and then he compacted all of the soil and clay on top to stop the water flow and send it through the pipe and away. The bucket is absolutely ginormous on this thing and you can see the shape of the pond coming together already. It's all really exciting. And you can see he's just up there working on the road. So everything that's been taken from here is going into fixing the road, like I mentioned yesterday and it's amazing to see. So basically he comes in and he's starting to shape the pond, scoops up a huge bit of silt that's been washed down from the valley and then fills it into the road. Let's go and look at the road because it's pretty impressive how quickly the road has started to come together which is going to make my life a lot easier because eventually I need to get my excavator up here all of this that you can see right now you couldn't walk on it was great big crevices it had been completely washed out and this silt is perfect for filling the road because it's really wet so it compacts really nicely and obviously he's got such a heavy machine he can drive backwards and forwards over it and it's just looking so much better you can see the bit that he hasn't got to yet look at the size of them crevices that are being filled and now it's a fully functional road things are moving quickly so here he comes up the road with another bucket So he's just grading it, going backwards and forwards. Really cool. So that is it, the end of day one of digging out the pond and things have gone swimmingly. I wish I was swimming in here. If you come over here, you can just see a little bit of scale of the size of this pond, it's massive, but we've managed to find the end of this pipe where it enters 
the pond and it doesn't look damaged, which is great news. This thing is an absolute monster. It's just huge. And the guy driving it is very impressive, very nimble with it because- Yeah, big it, up to Joao. Big up Joao, because getting past these two trees, there's literally like a couple of inches and he just sails through. It's amazing to watch. But if you come over here, you can just see how massive it is. We got all this beautiful silt beautiful. <laughs> that has been filling the road. And wait till you see the road. It is a transformation. I'm just looking now at the pond and it really is getting deeper and deeper. There's still a long, long way to go tomorrow and possibly the next day. And then we can start filling it. And I just can't wait till this is full of crystal clear spring water and I get naked and jump in instantly. <laughs> oh, oh no. <clears throat> No. Oh no. It went. It didn't go over. I don't know how it didn't go over. It went over the left one. I've got two brand new pair of boots and that's the second time that's happened today. The first time I literally lost my whole leg. I had to go and change my trousers. It's ridiculous. I'm so happy I got that on camera. But follow me to the road because it's really impressive. So before we get to the road, all of the big massive stones that he's been pulling out of the pond that were washed down, he's been building a retaining wall here and basically piling dirt over and over again, smoothing it out. And this is gonna be a nice flat area. It almost looks like a parking spot. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna be parking up here, but maybe when we come swimming, we can put a little plaque and this is where we park the UTV. But come and see the road. It's a massive, massive change. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'm actually blown away. So I would say more than 50 meters of road has been repaired. It's just brilliant because walking up here was a complete hazard before. I'll insert an image of what it looked like this morning. And now look at it, nice and smooth. This will dry out nicely. And then I can drive all the way up, which is just brilliant. And there's still so much more to come out of the pond. So we can just keep fixing more and more of the road. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We will see you on the next one to continue this pond build.